feel like we should just have him sing the rest of the program. <laughs> That's going to be far better than anything I can offer. Um, well, thank you. I mean, it's I'm about four months in, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, as the executive director of this organization, and it has just been such a thrill um, to get to work with, alongside our partners from the state, um, to work with our board and our staff, and, and, and all of you as our members and stakeholders and those that care about the park. This is a this is a truly special place. Um, I've been living in Boston now about ten years, um, both in uh, in the Fenway as well as in Back Bay, and the Esplanade has always been the closest park to my house, and so. Um, I've just come off a really fantastic three and a half years working at the Rose Kennedy Greenway. Um, and yet now being at the Esplanade, you know, this feels like home. I mean, this feels like the park that has always been the thing I see out my window. Um, where the little I do go running, it is on the Esplanade. <laughs> it's like once or twice a year. Um, it, is, it is just a fantastic cultural asset, civic asset, something that I'm, I'm so prideful in getting the opportunity to, to work with you all to take care of. Um, and to work with our, our really tremendous staff. Um, Kelsey is on our next slide here. Um, you know, these guys um, are the unheralded heroes of what goes on for us as an organization every day. Um, would you all sort of raise your hand or show where you are around the room? They're all, almost all, I think, sprinkled around here tonight. It is likely when you call the office you're talking to them, or when you go to a fitness class it was organized by them, or you see a beautiful um, garden or well manicured lawn in the park that was um, that was due to their care. So those guys um, are really the lifeblood of what gives us the opportunity to do what we do. So thank you to our great staff. And so I, I get the real benefit, among a couple other roles today, of getting to stand up here and talk about some of the great things we did in 2017 that I had absolutely nothing to do with. So um, again, it is that is that crew that I just uh, introduced you to that can take so much pride in, in all of our really great work. And um, you know, it's, it can be led off by sort of one of the most visible things that we got to do this past year, where we commissioned our first piece of public art. Um, you know, a, a, a commission um, by the Esplanade Association. 100% privately funded with the support of our donors, um, working alongside uh, the curator now and there um, to put this fantastic mural in the park. Fantastic and award-winning. Um, not bad for our first time out of the gate. And so you can see um, the real night and day difference between what was there before and what, what was there on the bottom. And so um, if you haven't been out to see the pattern, pattern behavior mural yet, please get out there and see it. Um, we expect that it's up for at least a few more months, and we may even look to extend the commission another year beyond that. But a really fantastic uh, project, and we've certainly got our juices flowing on what our next public art um, exploration may be. Um, you know, horticultural care will certainly always be, and, and, and the restoration of historic monuments will always be sort of um, a, a central part of our being, and what um, I think sets, you know, in, in many ways the Esplanade apart from other parks. And so um, we were thrilled to reopen after many years of neglect and, and having. Um, no longer been working with a lot of fountain. How many of you in the room are dog owners? I know there's a fair amount that are out there. Um, we, I hear so, there are probably very few weeks that go by where I don't talk to a, uh, a stakeholder or a member that says, well, my main attachment to the park is I take my dog out every morning, and I love the peace and the tranquility associated with being on the Esplanade. And now for those really hot summer days, um, we were thrilled to repair the, the historic lot of fountain that opened this past year. Um, in addition, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, we did a major renovation of the hat shell. Um, lawn that continues with some really significant annual maintenance and um, along with the, the maintenance and restoration of the Elliott Memorial Lawn. Uh, you can see uh, here a couple of the different things that really we believe enhance the visitor experience this year. Um, Twelve ornamental garden beds, so those, those are what we take mm -hmm. care of um, year in year out. We, we do basically all of the horticultural care in the park and, and that happens principally out of just a two-person staff represented tonight by Renee in the back of the room. I'm sure many Oh, Renee, if you're out in the park and you see somebody literally in the weeds making it a, um, a, a the beautiful park experience that it is, um, it is really a credit, a credit to Renee's hard work and the team that she puts together. Um, and so we continue to take care of all 12 or, uh, ornamental garden beds um, that you find throughout the Esplanade. Um, playground maintenance, so I think many of you know um, we had our beginning as an organization 17 years ago, our first real major project being um, the development of the Stoneman Playground. We followed that a few years ago by um, the development of the play space. Um, and so the two, um, two of the three playgrounds on the Esplanade are due to the work of our organization, and we've um, committed ourselves to their ongoing care. And so 
Um, you don't know how expensive a playground it really is until you own two of them. Uh, and so just this past year, even the newer of the two had, had a couple of the components that failed um, and we repaired them you know, with a matter of a couple weeks um, to ensure that they continue to be a safe and healthy place for, for uh, people to bring their kids and their grandkids. Um, we planted 26,000 flowers this year, which is such an impressive number on such a small staff. Um, and that those are enjoyed by all, at least hopefully soon enough. I think by the time the commissioner is done speaking, we will have uh, blooming uh, flowers in the park. Um, and finally this year, and this, some, this one may um, not always go as noticed despite how visible it is, but um, we were able to work with our partners at DCR this year to establish uh, a temporary banner program that um, you know, serves a couple of different um, uh, purposes. Uh, the big one being that it provides some visual continuity through the park, and so it actually helps people, whether you're driving on Starrell Drive or walking through the Esplanade. Um, most public parks, one of, the, one of the interesting things about them, and Charlie can maybe back me up on the numbers here, is that roughly 80% of the visitors to most public parks concentrate in only 20% of the space in those public parks, the, the old sort of 80-20 rule. And so with the Esplanade, we have such, such a uh, sector of vibrancy and activation around the hat shell um, and around the Fiedler Bridge and where most people come into the park. Um, and yet these banners have given us an opportunity to help stretch people through the park and recognize when you're still on the space that's getting taken care of uh, by the Esplanade Association in partnership with DCR. And so it's been a fantastic uh, program to also derive some revenue for our organization to be able to, again, expand our mission and put uh, those resources back into the park. And I talked a little bit about Renee's efforts before. We are one of the only all organically maintained public parks in the country. Um, so there, you know, our entire program um, revolves around brewing our own compost tea, promoting uh, the use and the growth of native plants within the park. Um, you know, if you've never seen a compost tea demonstration, reach out to one of us on the staff and we will take you for one this year. It is a fascinating process. Um, it's fantastic to see that an organization um, like ours is not bringing harmful pesticides or um, chemicals into the park for the care of this park. It's done all organically, and you'll actually find um, that it's both more cost-effective to do it that way, um, and the plants become more resilient. And we actually had the return of at least, I think is it four, Renee, native species to the park this past year? Six native species in the park? Four, four this past year. Um, and so that's a, that's a real accomplishment for, you know, an 80-plus year old park to actually be able to kind of uh, regenerate itself when you treat it the right way. Um, and so it's been something that we're really prideful in. And then about you know four or five years ago, we committed ourselves um, to ongoing care of the tree uh, canopy on the Esplanade. Uh, does anyone know, not the staff, does anyone know how many trees are on the Esplanade? Any guesses? Sure. 77. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're high or low. Uh, 1,700 trees on the Esplanade. Um, we've committed ourselves to their care um, as of about two or three years ago. We started with a tree inventory. This year we're working on a tree care management plan. Um, and by the end of this year, we will have pruned in just the last four years 80% of the trees on the Esplanade, with only about 20% remaining to go um, before we'll start over all over again. Um, and so um, really committed ourselves to the ongoing care, making sure that the tree canopy is healthy and sustainable for generations to come. Now we'll talk about a little bit of the programs on the Esplanade. So, um, yeah, volunteers make such a huge difference. We have Micah Jasny here tonight, our volunteer coordinator, um, who ran a volunteer program this year that brought over 1,600 volunteers into the park over the course of the year, from corporate groups to individuals to families um, to nonprofits. Um, even out of the fraternities and sororities that live nearby will come out and spend some time um, on the Esplanade. And, and that goes, that, that is so critical to our ability to maintain the park organically, to maintain it. Uh, again, in the sort of healthy condition that it's in, um, and it puts you know just hundreds and hundreds um, of hours into the park. Actually, it's probably in the thousands, right, Kelsey? Uh, thousands of hours into the park that keeps us from you know being able, you know we're not able to hire more staff than we currently have, and so those are really crucial hours that get spent in the park and allow us to do what we do. So we have a number of children's activities, and one of the things that's really important um, is bringing kids from around the city and around the region to the Esplanade. Um, so one of the things that we maybe don't talk about as much as we should um, is that this is a state park. This is a park that is um, that is funded through you know state revenues, um, you know through DCR with their limited um, resources and their major um, responsibility around the state. They do the absolute best that they can do um, on the Esplanade with the staffing and the resources they have. And so you know for us on uh, encouraging people to come to the park, we want to make sure that we're not 
reaching out to you know just who lives in Boston or just who lives nearby, but make sure that this is a welcoming place um, for children around the state. And so we run a program called Children in the Park each year that brings roughly 700 kids um, busted in for a day in the park, um, a day of programmed enjoyment with a number of fantastic partners. Um, you know where they get to be both exposed to the Esplanade as we all get to know it as we live and work nearby. Um, and then they get to call home and tell their parents that that's a really great place that I'd like to come back another time. Um, and that's been a fantastic program for us. We also, this past year, launched Family Adventure Days. And so if you didn't participate in these, I would put them on your calendar for next year. Um, as you can see, the variety of activities that took place this year um, with uh, a number of really you know, fantastic partnerships and give people um, who live in the area an opportunity of sort of a coordinated day where you can say, I'm going to go to the Esplanade that day and, and do a scavenger hunt or go fishing or kayaking. Um, the types of things that, you know, when you live nearby, sometimes you take them for granted. That that opportunity is always there, but then sometimes you never get to it. And so we're, we're working to program those specific days so you know you have those opportunities to celebrate with your family on the Esplanade. Okay, talking a little bit about our projects coming up this year. And so this is the stuff I'm really excited about that we're going to get to capitalize on. Um, if you were at our uh, annual meeting last year, you would have heard about phase one of the, uh, our signage program. Um, that is in its sort of 11th hour before you're going to see those, um, those signs in the park. We've been working um, with our partners at TCR again to, um, to get these signs fabricated, improved, permitted, and um, signage is one of those things that, uh, that takes a lot of effort. And uh, Emily, who many of you would have met on your way in tonight, I think she's in the back of the room, has been working um, really well to make sure that the first phase of this is successful. And so we're going to have... Um, six wayfinding signs with beautiful maps and, and other information about the park that will be installed, um, I believe, by the end of this month. Um, we're then looking to follow that up with a second phase where we improve all the directional, uh, I'm sorry, the educational signage, the interpretive signs that are around the park. This is a historic park, um, and so as the visitors that you bring to the area or the visitors that, that naturally find their way to the Esplanade um, are on the, in the park, we'd like to make sure that they understand that history. Um, I'm thrilled that we have our two founders of our organization here tonight, Linda and Gerald. Um, we're a 17-year-old organization that itself has its own history to tell, but in a year where um, the Department of Transportation is finishing up the, the historic Longfellow Bridge project, um, where we'll have the addition of the wonderful Fanny Appleton Bridge, um, whose architect Miguel is here tonight. We thank you for all your work. We want to continue to tell that story um, out into the park, um, and so we're looking to do that second phase beginning later this year as well. One of the major projects that I think many of you are familiar with is the, the current Lee Pool and the future of it. Um, these were um, a series of uh, really impressive um, public meetings held by our partners DCR with over 40 groups represented um, based on the, also the good work. And I don't know if he's still here tonight. Our, our fantastic state rep, Jay Livingstone, is, are you still here, Jay? I think he maybe had to run off to another meeting. But So he worked very hard along with our partners at DCR to make sure that this was a process where we could all dream really big. We could all think for ourselves. You've got this massive site at the, at the site of the Lee Pool that has been closed for, um, gosh, probably a couple decades now. Um, and what, what can we imagine for ourselves as sort of the 21st century visionaries and stewards of this public space? And what emerged from that process is just an absolutely fantastic building, the, the um, Esplanade River Pavilion that you see there. Um, and so this is the latest rendering. Um, we are engaged in a, in a partnership now with Hill House and the Esplanade Association where we are um, doing our darndest to figure out how do you raise the, the dollars associated with building something that, that wonderful um, and, then, and then later operating it. And so, um, yes, so this is where we are right now. There's been a series of terrific, uh, terrific public meetings and, and we're looking to see, you know, can we all, can this generation, as, as previous generations did for the Esplanade, raise the critical funds associated with building something that would be truly transformative for the park. Okay, this year, how many of you are the runners, walkers, bikers that we were talking about a little bit before? There's got to be more hands than that. Okay, that's virtually everybody, right? So, um, so one of the real pain points, but one of the, the true, I think, blessings of getting to work with this park is that everybody wants to use it. Um, and especially as Boston's population has swelled in recent years, there's even more people that are wanting to use it. Um, and as, a, as the Esplanade and DCR have done what we can to take care of the park at a, at a higher level, even more people have wanted to use the park. And so um, the pathways are busy, they're congested, um, and sometimes those uses are at odds with one another. And so uh, the Esplanade this year, the Esplanade Association is funding a study um, on how do we possibly separate the uses on the paths within the system. And so 
We want to continue to make sure that there are paths for everyone, um, but high-speed biking commuters, as opposed to the strollers or the walkers or the runners, all have various and different needs associated with the, with the pathway system on the Esplanade. And so we'd like to be a park for everyone. We'd like to figure out, can we accommodate all of those uses in a way that is logical and um, in forward thinking? And we've been engaged in a partnership with Walk Boston to explore sort of the first phase of this. And we're hoping by the end of this year to, to not only have a report that could guide all future um, evolution on the Esplanade as associates with any sort of changes to the pathway system, um, but can we make it better um, and can we maybe even start this year with a pilot project? And so that's where we're hoping to go in 2018. And so you heard a little bit before about our, our visual arts and the fact that we, we launched our first public art mural this past year. Um, towards the end of last year, we also got a, a terrific public art grant um, from the Boston Foundation that we're going to activate upon this year um, with uh, a series of, of performing arts performances, musical performances in the park. And so. Um, you know, if someone was telling me the other day that the Esplanade is, is likely Massachusetts's biggest uh, performing arts venue, you know, a million people every July 4th hear a musical concert out on the Esplanade, um, and we can be that more often, not necessarily at that same size, but we certainly um, would welcome doing more performing arts in the park, and, you know, as an organization, we, we're committed to as often as we can bring it to the public and to our stakeholders and friends, free and open performances, and so with the Boston Foundation grant this year, we're able to, um, and this is just sort of the beginnings of it, but we have a series of musical performances we'll be bringing to the park this year. And I think they'll be really punctuated on September 23rd. And so if you don't already have this event on your calendar, um, we're thrilled to be partnering with uh, the Celebrity Series of Boston um, for Jazz Along the Charles. And they're gonna be bringing 25 jazz um, ensembles into the park at the same time, on the same day, spread in 25 different locations throughout the long linear park that we are, 3.1 miles, um, and you're going to be able to walk whichever direction you want, east or west, um, and hear the same body of Boston-themed music played by 25 different ensembles in 25 different ways. And that will all be free to the public. And so we are just ecstatic to be working with them and in partnership with DCR on what we think is going to be an absolutely fantastic event and the type of the type of just, I think, cultural experience that you can sometimes only have in a city and you can only have in a public space that's really well regarded and has a group like the Esplanade Association that's willing to activate that park in behalf of the public. And so be sure to mark your calendar for that one and we will send out all kinds of reminders as we get a little bit closer. All right, in our park trees, I talked about this a little bit more. So we, you know, this is, um, you know, I talked to you a little bit earlier about the first phase of this. So we're doing a tree inventory this year that will be associated with uh, we did, I'm sorry, an earlier tree inventory that we've been acting upon with our pruning program. This will now figure out, okay, we've got, you know, an older tree canopy. As I, as I was told by, by Renee earlier this year, um, we have trees that are rated mostly mature to over mature, and in years to come, we're going to be expecting to see a higher rate of failures in the trees, no matter how, how well we take care of them as an organization. And so we're going to be engaged in a study, actually we're most of the way through a study right now, um, trying to look at um, how do we ensure the continued health and vibrancy of the tree canopy and do we have a smart forward-looking plan for replanting trees as we experience more failures in the year to come. We want to make sure we always have at least the 1,700 trees that we <laughs> talked about before um, and so this is just one way that we're going to be able to provide for that as an organization. All right and then the last thing and then you'll get to hear our exciting speaker Charlie is um, our signature events for this year. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to do coming in this year was take stock of our signature events and, and really take a fresh look at them and figure out how can we make these bigger and better um, and, and interact with people in the way that you all want to use the, the Esplanade. And one of the first ones that I learned about was that we have this really fantastic 5K that sells out every year. That every year we were selling out and that we were looking for a way to expand the event. And we worked with our partners at DCR to move the event to a weekend, um, be able to triple the size of the event, um, and we were, we were lucky enough to have a fantastic presenting sponsorship through Blue Cross and Blue Shield that will make this, I think, really one of the signature 5Ks anywhere in Massachusetts. Um, we've taken to dubbing it Kelsey and I, Boston's Most Beautiful 5K, and we really, really believe that's what it is. So we hope you will join us, on the, for those of you that are the runners in the room, um, on Sunday, May 20th at 9 a.m. for Boston's Most Beautiful 5K. 
Um, in addition, if running isn't your thing, and I will be running it that day, this is one of the two days a year I run the Esplanade. Um, although, actually, if, if you know Alexi, she's committed to getting me running it a whole lot more this year. Um, but if, if running isn't your thing, we'll also be looking for volunteers for that event, hand, handing out water and helping our staff through the day. Certainly one of the things we most need is we triple the size of that event will be a little bit of help that day. So if you're so inclined, please let us know on your way out today. Uh, Healthy, Fit, and Fun is one of our true signature programs, and so we're thrilled to again offer three nights of free fitness classes to the public this year. Tuesday, Zumba, Wednesday, Yoga, Thursday, Boot Camp. Um, it doesn't get much better than being out on the Esplanade at sunset, um, performing any one of these various fitness activities with great partners from around the, the city, and so please join us for those. Our summer dock party again will be held this year on, on Thursday, July 19th. Um, this is a really fantastic event that, again, we, we thank our partners at CBI. We, we love the opportunity to bring folks um, into your space, Charlie, and, and to see all the great work that CBI does in the park. Um, and we're thrilled to just spend at least one, one night there, um, you know, enjoying, enjoying summertime um, and enjoying sort of uh, each other and those that, that love and, and support the Esplanade. And then finally, our our Moon Dance Gala um, this year will be up one week from when you traditionally know it's Saturday, September 15th. Um, we have sponsorship opportunities and, and ticket information that's available at the door tonight, so on your way out you can grab that or you can actually purchase your tickets tonight for those of you that, that look forward to this event every year. Um, we have some surprises in store that I'm not going to reveal tonight, but um, this year's theme is that it's not easy being green. Um, which, when you're a park, it certainly isn't easy to, to do all that we do, and so we're, we're really looking forward to a fantastic night then. Our Moon Dance After Dark takes place that same night, and so um, this this crowd trends at least a little bit younger, but it really brings the new energy um, infusion into the end of the of the Moon Dance Gala and gives folks uh, an opportunity to continue um, the night well and well into the uh, the late evening hours. Um, and then finally, our Canine Promenade we should be back this year. We don't have a date just yet, but um, this has emerged as one of our most popular uh, events of the year as well. Um, and so for the four-legged friends or, the, or just the two-legged ones that like to pet animals, uh, come out and join us for our canine promenade later this year. And with that, um, it's a real pleasure of mine to get to introduce our keynote speaker tonight. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I spent um, the last three and a half years at a, uh, the Rose Kennedy Greenway and had the, the real pleasure of working alongside uh, Charlie McCabe. Um, and so we are, we are now both in, in former, or those were both our former lives. Um, Charlie, among uh, many other roles in his, um, in his park career, was um, the director of programs at the, at the Rose Kennedy Greenway um, before assuming his most recent uh, role as the executive director of the, city for, uh, the Center for City Park Excellence. Um, it's a group affiliated with our friends at, at the Trust for Public Land, who's another fantastic group um, working on behalf of the public and, and park stewardship. Um, and I think, I think this speech tonight, this, this talk is going to be a real treat for those of you that love public parks because um, certainly what we're interested in at the Esplanade is being at the forefront of innovation in public parks. How can, we, how can we deepen our relationship with DCR and the public to take care of this park at an even greater level than what we're doing today? How can we bring a higher level of programming to the park or bring up the level of quality of the day-to-day -day experience that you have in the park? Um, and Charlie's at the forefront of thinking about those ideas. And so um, we're, we're delighted to have him speak to you a little bit tonight about trends in, in public park management.